Lux. Yes. <laughs> we're here in Seattle. You're homeless. Living in this RV with your cat. Yes. <laughs> Tell me about homelessness in Seattle. Um, it's definitely very chaotic here. <laughs> it's different than Everett, that's for sure. And you, so you were in Everett for a while? Yeah. I moved to Seattle about two years ago, well, Soto specifically. And you've been homeless for three years, you said? Give or take, yeah. Now, you, you, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 19. You're 19? Yes. So you've been outside for, wow. How do you survive out here? Um, I think it's all about keeping yourself grounded and, and, and like, or reminding, reminding myself like who I like am at the end of the day and doing things that I like still and, you know, because when you stop doing that, you start to lose yourself really quickly. It's easy to lose yourself out here. Oh, yeah. And um, how did you end up homeless? I mean, you're homeless at, uh, what, 17? Yeah, I'm 16, 17. Um, my parents, they, they're both, they were both separated. Um, and so were my step-parents. So, like, my stepdad as well was separated from my mom. And um, they were always arguing and stuff, and... I've, I've always had issues with them and we just never really could get along and my mom couldn't really take care of me because she had a lot of health issues and stuff so she wasn't able to be there at all and and so it just it, it, I just couldn't stay there they wouldn't let me partially and partially just because I, I I know I couldn't you know it was an unhealthy environment yeah so you left at 16 17 pretty much yeah and tell me about going on the streets as a young woman. Uh, it was really scary at first, um, especially. It's, I mean, it still is, but it was very scary because of how unknown it was at the beginning. Because, I mean, I had pretty much no one. With, and, and a lot of people, like, especially downtown, they wouldn't want to help me or interact with me at all. Even, like, the, the full-grown adults wouldn't want to help me or call anybody or nothing because they saw that, that I was a minor, you know what I mean? So they'd like run from me almost. <laughs> so when I first didn't have any sort of shelter or nothing and was just basically in a tent, if that, it just was really scary. <laughs> so you first started in a tent, but then you got an RV. Eventually, yeah. Um, your Seattle is sweeping areas, and this area is scheduled for a sweep. This one? Yes. Uh -huh. That's what Joe was telling me. So, for those watching, we're out with the uh, vehicle residency outreach team who comes out and helps you. Mm -hmm. And I uh, adore Joe and Jonah. Mm -hmm. They're awesome. They are. What would you want people to know about homelessness? You know, the people driving by, the house people, the people going over in the plane. Mm -hmm. What would you want them to know about homelessness? That just because we're kind of like unknown and kind of like a scary area doesn't doesn't mean that like we're not all out to get you you know what I mean like we're not we're not all trying to harm the environment we're all I know it, it's shitty and stuff but I mean it is what it is and it doesn't have to be a thing that everybody hates you know what I mean it can be a positive not a positive thing but it can be just uh, you know what I mean it does not ha always have to be approached at such a angry you're not an evil monster exactly <laughs> and we're all not the same and we're there, there are especially those ones on the face of it who are all causing problems in public and stuff like that like that shit's fucking embarrassing for us too you know what i mean like it's not everyone <laughs> well how's people cause embarrassments in public too yeah but you know what i mean right. the yeah right but they exactly. blame us and exactly. then they group us all together saying they're all like that mm -hmm. Just, or because they base a family member who was uh, a negative part in their life that is homeless, you know what I mean? And they use that as a generalization and just, you know what I mean, have this angry outlook on every, everybody who's homeless. Yeah. Now, you were saying you had some mental health issues that you were trying to get help for. Is anybody helping you? 
Right now, I've been, I've been trying to reach out for a while. Um, I've been going to a place called Youth Care, which is downtown Seattle. For, that's uh, for like 18 to 25 year olds who are homeless. Uh, and they're pretty, they're pretty cool, but like I've been assigned a housing counselor and, and we talked like once and then they suddenly don't work there anymore and didn't tell me and I was waiting on an email. Like it's just a bunch of waiting. So you, you got a housing counselor, but you're on the waiting list. Yeah, and then I found out that I'm not on the waiting list because he never put me on the waiting list and he doesn't even work at the place anymore. So they put <laughs> they told you they put you on the waiting list and then you had a personnel change and turns out you're not on the waiting yeah, list. Yeah, he never submitted it or something. Very common. Yeah. And sadly, homeless people... Everyone's waiting for housing, you know? Right. Yeah. People are on the waiting list for years and years and years. years and years. You know. Um, and so besides the vehicle residency outreach, is anybody else helping you? And uh, the youth program? Um, not, I mean, not really yet, but it's also partially my fault because uh, you have to go and show up there um, during work hours, you know what I mean, to talk to the right people to, you know. And I know there are... There are in the general sense, when it comes to food and clothes and stuff, there are actually a lot of people. Right. There's yeah. lots of food. It's awesome, yeah. There's... But not, a, not enough housing. There's no. plenty of food. And, and yeah, I know you have to, you know, you say it's your fault, but when you leave, your stuff gets stolen. And it's not easy to, you know. Yeah. It definitely. Do you have a bus pass? Huh? Do you have a bus pass? Do you have a car? So it's not easy for you to get any. I have a bike, yeah. Right, right. But downtown is pretty far. Yeah. So it takes me about, I'd say, to get from here to youth care. It'd be about 25 minute to a half an hour oh, bike ride all uphill. Yeah, yeah. But no, it isn't bad, but it's, it's yeah. yeah. Thankfully. And then the way back is fun. <laughs> yeah, because it's downhill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's a day like? Um... Or should I, I mean, you're a, a young female out here. It's got to be scary. I'm, I'm really lucky when it comes to, I have a lot of really good friends out here that I found that I'm very fortunate for. Like my roommate, he's, he's awesome. He's, he's a, um, he's really sweet. He's just, um. You got somebody taking care of you. Yeah. He's like, he's like a parental figure for me. You know what I mean? More than yeah. anything. And he, he helped me with getting my RV and our RV, but yeah, he he did have an RV, but his, so you see, he went to jail two days ago and his RV's already got towed. Oh my God. I don't know where. Right. And it was perfectly fine when he was here and I was, it was there when I fell asleep and I woke up and it's gone. And it was, there was no tag, nothing. They didn't put a sticker on it, nothing. And so now when he gets out, he's not going to have a home. Okay. So. Starts from scratch. Fuck. And an RV is better than a tent. It is. It's especially, way better. Especially with winter coming. Oh, yeah. It makes a world of a difference. Yeah. So what's your future like? Um, I'm not sure, but I, I'm, I'm aiming for it to go up. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you're young. You'll do it. And wherever I hope that will be the most, like, I don't know how to put it, like, I'm not sure, but I know that as long as I do what I think is right and trust my gut, then it'll probably, it'll go up, you know? Well, you have to be a survivor out here. Oh, what's your cat's inside. name? Her name's Moth. I got to put her inside because she wants to go inside. Okay. But. Well, hey, we can end. We can end. <laughs> Unless there's anything else you'd like to say. Um, thank you. <laughs> okay. If you had three wishes, what would they be? Um, I wish that there would be world peace. And by that, more just like, just equality and just how the community is. Just like, <laughs> she wants to go inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's rule. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I want to go in. <laughs> but uh, the second one would probably be mm, that I could live in like a castle. <laughs> castle? <be> cool. Yeah. <laughs> If we're talking three wishes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> and the third one, um, probably be that I could fly. <laughs> okay, cool. World peace, a castle, and being able to fly. <laughs> All great wishes. <laughs>
Well, thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you.